Hello everyone. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the opportunity to participate from a distance. I'm Peta Latimo from Connectus Human Rights and I'll speak briefly about our experience in Brazil. On May 24th this year, Brazil took a decisive step by sanctioning a new migration law that encompasses a human rights perspective. This new legislation resulted from years of strong civil society mobilization. We urged for the revocation of the old foreigners statute, which dated from dictatorship times and was incompatible with Brazil's democratic constitution and with its international obligations. So the foreigner statute was enforced for 37 years and understood migrant persons as a potential threat to national security. It was discriminatory as it prohibited, for instance, the enjoyment of some rights by migrants, such as the right to participate in trade unions and in social protests. The foreigner statute also hampered the regularization of migrants, being unduly bureaucratic and inefficient in practice. Those difficulties to access documentation place migrants in a vulnerable situation as targets for exploitation. The new Brazilian migration law changed that, changed that paradigm. So at its core are the principles of equality and non-discrimination in the enjoyment of all human rights and access to public services. The new law establishes more access, accessible and effective procedures for regularization. It secures the principle of non-criminalization of migrants, meaning that the right to due process and access to public defense must be guaranteed in all procedures related to deportation, expulsion and repatriation. Also, migrants cannot be deprived of their liberty based solely on irregular migratory status. Again, I emphasize the crucial role uh, played by civil society in advocating in Parliament for those and other aspects to be incorporated in the text. The new law has many merits, um, but regrettably, President Temer has vetoed some important articles. I'll give you two examples. First, uh, the article that allowed for transboundary transit of indigenous people within their traditional territories. And second, the so-called amnesty clause, which determined the regularization of all migrants that were already in Brazilian territory. This veto, in particular, astonished us. Because amnesty was a consolidated policy in Brazil, adopted four times in the past since the 80s. So it would be a very important measure to document and regularize migrants already in Brazil, hence inaugurating this new phase of our history from a different starting point. So we are hopeful that the Congress can still change this presidential veto. Of course, uh, that adopting a new legislation is one thing, but uh, implementing it is a whole other challenge. So it remains to be seen how Brazil will effectively put in place mechanisms and procedures as well as training of authorities and public agents to realize this goal in practice. This is why uh, we are now concerned over how the government will conduct the phase of administrative regulation and ordinances. We are demanding it to be fully transparent and participatory meaning that contributions from civil society must be taken fully into account during this process. Another pending issue is that Brazil still needs to establish a civilian authority responsible for conducting regularization procedures and control of documentation at entrance and exit points. Experience in other countries of the region where civilian authorities have been established demonstrate the success of this approach where police forces act in collaboration only where the particular circumstances require. So lastly, I would like to point out that in adopting this new law, Brazil surely antagonizes discourses worldwide that speak for walls and prisons at borders. Brazil aligns itself with other countries of the region, such as Argentina and Uruguay, which have taken a similar stance in adopting a human rights perspective to migration, responding in a much more adequately way, uh, adequate way to the contemporary needs of human mobility. 
I finally thank you for your attention. I believe that my colleagues from the panel will advance further on some of the points that I have touched and I wish you all a good continuation of the dialogue. Thank you. Bye-bye.